Hello, hello everyone. Welcome or welcome back to my small YouTube channel about knitting and everything related. Uh, my name is Isabel. I am in France. I have three sons. I have three cats. Some say it's related. And uh, today is going to be a video about uh, my woolly news. I have three main series on my channel. Um, my regular knitting adventures, such as in the format you can find about everywhere um, on YouTube, the Woolly News, uh, like today, where um, I bring you what has caught my attention, what has caught my eye. I'm not a journalist, so it's my own take on the knitting world and fiber community. And a third series about uh, my yarn, No Buy Year. And I have some life updates because uh, some of you have been asking questions and being very nice about uh, what I said about my father's condition last week. So uh, I will save that for the end of the podcast because if you are not interested, you will just be able to skip that. So uh, for the woolly news today, for the last two weeks, and I'm sorry, I had not much time to gather so um and, and and watch about every day what was happening so i may have skipped or missed a lot of things um so what i want to bring you today is uh, a couple of patterns that i have seen and that i like very much um four patterns um a class uh, or a workshop that uh, you can attend that should be very interesting a couple YouTube episodes uh, that I also want to talk about and a book. I had no time um, to search my uh, files and um, my Ravelry pages and, and where I have saved patterns and my notes for a free pattern today. So uh, I'm sorry, there will not be any free pattern to highlight today. Good. So uh, first, uh, the patterns that I have seen. The first one is not a new pattern. It's, it's, it's been published quite some time ago. It's the Badger and Bloom uh, sweater from Anne Wenzel. So there are several versions, one that is unisex, and this one is more, I guess, for a human shape or a uh, woman shape. You see how much I, there is no importance to me whether you are a man or a woman. Uh, it's a human shape, it, it, of course. Uh, it's a, more a woman shape and a, a shorter version of this uh, sweater. And what really interested me is that um, she knitted, she presents it, um, the body is uh, yellow and there is some color work on the yoke, on the sleeves and at uh, the bottom of the body and before the ribbing part or maybe incorporated also with the ribbing part. Um, you know that I have knitted um, a mohair, a yellow mohair sweater, the Lorenzen sweater, and I have leftovers. And with these leftovers, I wanted to associate with the, the um, Surrey a very colorful a uh, thread made of recycled series by Fonti, the Filature Fonti. And uh, I wanted to do something with associating this bright yellow and a very colorful um, thread. So I have three balls, three different threads that were in the same skin. I had a very hard time to ball it up, but anyway, it's done. And I was quite, I was looking for something to make with that. Uh, but I knew I wanted to associate the two. I think the Badger and Bloom um, uh, pattern is the one I was looking for. Um, not necessarily the way Anne Wenzel has presented it. Um, most probably will be incorporated, incorporating some yellow parts in the yoke or in the color work also at the uh, sleeves and at the bottom of the sweater. I may have to skip the sleeves, the bottom of the sleeves and the bottom of the ribbing of the body of the sweater because I may not have enough uh, sari yarn but or thread. But anyway, 
the yoke and the stitch pattern is exactly what I wanted to do. So what, when I'm ready, I'll buy it and uh, uh, I'll, I'll knit it. Of course, of course, unless I see something else that catches my attention and make, make me want to knit it. As long as it's not casted on, you never know. But anyway, this pattern is very interesting. You may have a look also at the unisex version that is presented in more brownish and neutral colors. Um, the, the, the color work is really, at the same time, simple and uh, stunning and exquisite. So uh, yes, so that's um, the Badger and Bloom pattern. Okay. Oh yes, and what I've, you know, I, I, I spent the morning taking a bit of notes because I had no time to take notes for the last two weeks. So um, I wrote that down this morning. Um, what, what One thing that also makes me happy is that um, the yarn I have won't, is not the courage, correct gauge, won't, I won't need gauge gauge, sorry, sorry, I won't need gauge with my yarn. Uh, so I will have to calculate and adjust and and uh, make the pattern my own. And I like that very much. And it's, it's what makes me happy too. Okay, next pattern is a pattern that has not been released yet. Uh, it's from Rachel Lisley. She's uh, unwind knitwear about everywhere. I've already talked about talked about her, uh, her designs uh, in a previous episode and I will knit the Orbit sweater at some point. She's published a picture of her next design. It's a, a yoke. She, she has a picture of a yoke with a very nice stitch pattern and I'm really falling in love every time I see a very nice lace but stitch pattern not with holes as you think in lace, but a stitch pattern um, on a bigger yarn in a yoke for a sweater. I, it's a neutral color. I like that very much. And uh, so I'm just uh, waiting for her to publish the pattern. Uh, you may have a look also and follow what she's uh, going to be up to with that pattern. But... I should remember and not go left, right, left, right uh, with such designs that I have the Coutan sweater uh, uh, pullover and I have the um, Rococo pullover patterns. I have both patterns in my queue that are waiting for me to knit. And it's the same kind of inspiration, maybe not the same yarn weight, of course not the same stitch pattern, but it's exactly the same type of sweater with a complicated stitch, or what looks like a complicated stitch pattern on the look. I may buy uh, Rachel's uh, pattern when it comes out, just to support the designer, because I like she, what she does and it's a way to you know, buying patterns is a way to support designers. I don't want to have a queue of patterns to knit that is so big <laughs> that I won't be able, <clears throat> sorry, to, to, to go to, to it and knit it. But, um, um, and, and they look similar, but yes, yes, I they are different. And I like all of them, the three of them I like very much. So we'll see. I'll see what I do when when she publishes it, and I guess I'm gonna get it anyway, even though I have already two beautiful patterns that are in this right, the same right, the same spot. At least for me. Okay, next is another stitch pattern um, with la with holes in the lace. Um, and it's uh, uh, Meretz uh, Bretzberger, she's Butzeria about everywhere, um, who's shown, because she hasn't published the pattern yet, uh, a call or a color um, that she knitted. And what I like is that the, 
stitch pattern is on both the, the, the coal or the neck part of the collar and the collar itself. Uh, usually when you have stitch patterns like that, you have ribs uh, on the uh, collar part or around the neck and then a stitch pattern that goes down a yoke or, you know, if, if it just stops here, it's a collar. Um, but this time she's made um, the coal, the neck part of it uh, with a stitch pattern and so as you have uh, increases and decreases I guess um, the border is not a straight line it has you know some kind of waves I think it is extremely 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 beautiful and uh, uh, she was uh, kind of asking should I publish that yes Yes, you should. It's a very beautiful pattern. Um, please do publish it. I'm sure she won't, she won't look at all at my um, uh, podcast, but uh, I uh, at my video, but I commented on her Instagram post. Uh, that could be also the beginning of a very beautiful sweater, a very beautiful yoke for a sweater. So. Uh, I hope she will publish it. Maybe, I guess, if she's asking the question, it's maybe because as it's a very complicated lace, uh, or what looks like, at least you have you know many things to do in a row, grading may be a bit difficult. Uh, so, um, but I guess there are places where you can place increases and, Okay, um, I don't know why she she's considering publishing it or not publishing it, but anyway, I hope she does because it's a very beautiful, and I hope you you're gonna keep your eyes open too. Okay, um, next and um, last pattern is uh, from a designer I have never talked about. Uh, you know, you know I like. Uh, three-dimensional or multi-dimensional uh, patterns even though I have never knitted any for now I have a couple in my queue uh, one from Rastus who's done a pattern a stitch pattern that looks like origami a folded paper um, I like these looks and feels very 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 much and uh, um, I've always you know it catches my eye every time. I was not following her and uh, so she is uh, Ursa Major Knits, I hope. Uh, I am, and her first name is Chris, I do not know or I, I, I did not look for it. She's not saying it publicly, so uh, her last name, so you know, she's Chris. And uh, uh, she has a whole gallery of very impressive designs um, that look like, that combine color work and three-dimensional work. Um, and her last pattern was uh, DreamWorks. I think the Instagram algorithm <laughs> understood I was interested in that because I followed her right away and I looked for her information and everything. So DreamWorks, it looks sort of like um, a dragon back and a wing or something like that. Very, very nice. You can imagine all the color works, different colors you can use um, in that pattern. And she has a lot of other ones. Some of them are more, uh, less three-dimensional or multi-dimensional, more f flat, if I may, but uh, with her color work, it's stunning. Stunning. Um, yeah, if if you like the look and feel of pleats in a design in a in a finished object, if you like color work, um, please have a look at she what she's doing, and I'm I'm for sure gonna keep in my watch list her what she does in my watch list because. Um, I know I have yarn in my stash that I envision um, that I can knit this pattern and 
you know, her, her whole library is going to be food for my daydreams. Um, yeah, it's, you know, very original and very nice uh, patterns. Okay, next, so I'm finished with uh, patterns and once again, sorry, I haven't looked for, I have several, but I, that were in my queue to talk about and, but I did not take, I did not take the time to, uh, to, to go through my free patterns. So, uh, um, let's skip that for now. And, um, so there is uh, a workshop from, uh, uh, Stephen West or, um, it's the West Needs account that posted it. So I guess it's more of his collective, uh, account from his store and, and, and project. Uh, it was not Stephen and Penelope, it was not Stephen West's own account. So uh, anyway, um, he's having a workshop and so he has already several workshops um, that are, that you can attend, of course you, you pay for that, but what I like um, he's, he's doing, it's a workshop, once you buy it, you do it at your own pace. Um, I have seen several other workshops where you have to register, you have a very short window to register. Uh, if you're outside of this window, you can't follow um, the workshop and uh, uh, you have to be there at said time and said day to uh, have access to the content. And uh, um, most, most of us have um, a working life. We can't do whatever we want with our time at you know, whenever we want. Um, and even if you are not pressured by a paid for uh, work, if you are retired or you don't need to work for a living, uh, you may not be available at said time and said hour, uh, said day to, to follow a workshop. And uh, I like that when you subscribe to the workshop, it's available for you whenever you want to follow it. Um, this particular one uh, was uh, of interest to me because it's about shawl designing. That's something at some point I want uh, to undergo. I have already several books about shawls constructions, about sweater constructions. For now, I'm choosing, there are so many, so many beautiful patterns. Um, so I'm choosing to knit according to a pattern. Uh, but in the back of my mind, if at some point I have some time, I would like to design my own, you know, the, sweat, the shawl for my mother I made. I made on my own with uh, several stitch patterns I had found in my books and a ba very basic triangular shawl construction. And so I guess at some point, and I'm sure, I'm sure what he's doing is, uh, uh, you know, very... Um, I'm not sure how to say, I should have looked for that word because I thought about it and I said, oh, how do, do, do I say that? He's, I think he's going to be a good teacher. That's the point. Um, when I watch his uh, videos, he's uh, explaining, uh, very well explaining what he does and he shows what he does um, in a way that is accessible to uh, many people, I think. So, um, whether you are an experienced knitter or whether you are a beginner and you want to know more about shawl construction and shawl designing, um, there's a work workshop for you. And I think the two other ones are about color work. I think, I think. Uh, I checked, but I do not recall what I saw. Anyway, uh, if at some point, you want to design a shawl and you want to be guided and from from a professional i mean look at what he's publishing he can you know if, if he's a good teacher and uh, from what i see from his video and he has a lot of very different shawls uh, published already for different construction different color works and everything i'm sure i'm sure his workshop workshops must be very, very interesting. Okay, next is about uh, La Bien Aimée. So there are <clears throat> several informations I want to say or talk about La Bien Aimée. First, 
and it's only because it happened last night. I uh, attended he, her last uh, meet night. It was on February 15th. Uh, so we are on 16th today. So I went, I attended last night. It's an online workshop. And, uh, you know, it's one of the very good sides of uh, pan the pandemic and uh, uh, working from, uh, from home and, you know, many people not being able to attend shops. Of course, I would prefer shops are open. But, uh, um, the good side of it is that people are doing these virtual meet nights that I can attend. Otherwise, I would have never, ever been able to attend. So um, anyway, she was doing that uh, before, but um, it's very, you know, I like to attend these events or when I can't, I, li I like to watch um, uh, the recorded video because uh, and I, and I think last, last night was her last uh, meet night about her worsted uh, yellow book. Uh, and it was with uh, and, um, Nora Gone and Andrea Morrow. Once again, once again, very interesting uh, piece of life, if you wish, um, about you know, knowing better these designers and Andrea Maury, Maury has, a, has a YouTube podcast and she has an online presence that is quite uh, full. So uh, you may not need exactly to watch this uh, video to know more or attend the midnight to know more about her. But Noragon doesn't have this extended uh, online presence. And uh, uh, I like very much once again, uh, knowing more about her and her design process and her story and everything. And if, as, as with the other uh, knit nights, test knitters were there. And uh, uh, that again, I think is extremely interesting. And last night they talk about uh, what, what is a test knit and what is required to be a test knitter. Full disclosure, nothing, nothing is required. Even if you are a beginner knitter, you don't need to hold yourself back if you have the time to test knit because it's always interesting, as they said, by, um, for designers to have every level in their test knitters because if you are a very advanced knitter and there are small not errors, but things that may not be explained very well, you are going to read through and understand and knit the thing as the designer intended. And maybe they want uh, this pattern to be accessible to beginners. And if you're a beginner and you test knit, you will say, what did you want to, to say here? I don't understand. And an advanced knitter will rose through, understand and knit. So uh, it was very, very interesting. And once again, to place the test knitter in the spotlight where uh, they usually are not and are completely invisible. Um, what also she said, she showed last night is um, a future Cori Confetti. So the current one that is, uh, has been released uh, is the Framboise one. And uh, the previous podcast, uh, she showed several uh, combination with several mohair, and it's uh, you know that deep, deep raspberry type of color, and that you can adjust, you know, whether you combine it with a lighter or a deeper tone um, in the in the mohair. But she sneak peeked the next. So I guess you, the future, is on that side. The next one. Uh, that she's going to be released and it's a very dark blue or black. I'm quite sorry. I did not take notes. And when I, uh, when I saw it, it was obvious. Okay. <laughs> I did not take notes. I, I think it was blue because as soon as she said, I said, Oh, how, how am I going to resist not buying any because blue is my black. So, and, uh, so Amy is designing a striped sweater with uh, this next batch of uh, curry confetti striped with a very bright pink. So uh, it was extremely nice of her to show that. We'll see it in the recording. It's not available yet. So uh, 
maybe when this uh, video, my video goes up, she will have published it, but I have no link for now. And uh, uh, yeah, it was it was a very uh, uh, you know a very nice colorway for Cory Confetti. And I'm as I you know looked if her if she had put up a video, I realized that I attended the previous podcast. Um, okay, so my lady cat was here and I did not see her right now, and she's gone. Okay, she will come back. Um, I, I did I attend I do not I yes I did attend the previous podcast uh, midnight and uh, uh, but uh, I attended it was on the evening my previous Wooly news um, video went up so it was on February 4th and so that night so I had recorded a couple days before and that night um, the midnight happened and, uh, you know, I haven't posted any Wooly News uh, videos since then. So uh, the previous Nip Night, which is available on her YouTube channel, is uh, she hosted, um, she invited uh, Tien Tiu Lam and uh, Sylvia Watts Cherry. Two very interesting also designer. I liked, I liked very much Sylvia's um, story and uh, how she could retire quite early at 50 something and uh, um, uh, to dedicate her time to her knitting and her knitting designs and you know she's very famous and she had this very famous sweater with the head of a woman in the front and uh, um, yeah, it was extremely, extremely interesting too. The test knitters uh, also had, um, uh, you know, very, very nice inputs and nice story with their designers, I, I want to say. And uh, also Amy has, has a pool of test knitters, uh, people who knit very fast and very well that she's solicited for a couple of these patterns. And uh, uh, what also I liked in Sylvia's uh, what's uh, cherry uh, design in the book, it's a, a sweater, the Amina sweater, that is knitted in pieces. And this is how I started to knit at the time because there was no uh, knitting in the round, at least in France when I started, and that was over 50 years ago. And uh, um, I like the way knitting in pieces and having seams structures the sweater and preventing, prevent it from um, sagging and being deformed under its own weight. And uh, uh, whenever you have only one stitch that is holding the whole con sweater construction and the whole uh, shoulder part so uh, yeah I, I like I like very much the structure um, seamed garment have and I may at some point need this I mean a sweater because the color work is just stunning and Amy was having one, one in uh, not in the colors that uh, Sylvia has published in the book but uh, uh, one in uh, gray black and white okay my Baby cat is walking between me and the, and the camera. You you may have seen a bit of him. Okay, he's gone. So um, that was another another very uh, uh, great episode, and uh, this one I can link uh, down below, and you can you can watch if you haven't already. And uh, you know also talk Q. I, I guess Q and Amy have a story together. They know each other for a long time and they appreciate each other. And it was, you know, pouring through the screen that that they would appreciate that they are appreciating each other quite quite a lot. Or at least that's what I saw. Okay. Um, last last news uh, for today is a book. So uh, about that, that kind of uh, <laughs> summarize 
two points I made today. One is a three-dimensional knitting, and the second is uh, Nora Gone, who was invited by La Bienvenue. Uh, so Nora Gone has just, or it's not released yet, at least in France, the book is going to be out tomorrow. Uh, so uh, Nora Gone uh, release, releases a new book that is called Knit, Fold, Pleat, Repeat. What a program. What a program. And I could browse through a few of the pages that were available online. You know I like multidimensional knitting. You know I like Nora Gone. I already have a couple of her books. Mm. Sorry. Um, yes, I already bought a book for my uh, February book budget. So that was uh, Stephen West's uh, Painting Shoals book that I'm you know, waiting for any delivery notice. And the order has been confirmed. Um, so I'm going to get it at some point. But I think I'm going to keep an eye on this one. And I'm going to keep an eye on the stock. And if I see the stocks are get, going to be low, I will buy it as my March uh, budget uh, for books. Um, just not to, to uh, miss it. Um, so I'll be discussing that because I've been thinking about that. But if I start to buy books ahead of my month, budget uh, it may not work in the end <laughs> so I don't know what I would do but I think I, I, I want this one very much uh, because I like everything that that the covers uh, shows me I'm gonna get and a few a few pages from the inside of the book uh, that I've sold I, I've confirmed so uh yeah i i will most most certainly keep an eye on this book once it's out uh, have a look at the stocks and if i see the stocks are going to be low i i i i get it uh so uh yeah that that's it for today um i hope i hope you enjoyed um this uh today's series about woolly news and uh, if, if you are not interested in my, about my life, um, uh, my life information, uh, my life segment, um, I've never done a, a life segment, but I guess today I need to, to do, to, to incorporate one. Uh, I will see you next time and uh, uh, thanks for watching. And uh, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you some news about uh, my father. And you are welcome to <laughs> stop here if you're not interested, of course. So my father is still in the hospital. I was very uh, pleased, no, not pleased, but it, it went into my heart to read your comments uh, under the previous video. Um, so he's still in the hospital, he's doing better. He has both uh, kidney and heart condition and these do not, when they do not play well together, it can be quite uh, difficult for a human body and he's 88. So once again, once again, he got out of it and he's probably gonna come back home next week. But what I asked to the hospital is that he has maybe a weekly uh, checkup, uh, not a full checkup because now, at least in France, so I need I need to call them back tomorrow again tomorrow um, because um, there is some kind of a setup where hospital can send small units to people who are at home and check on them on a regular basis. It did not exist two years ago. Last time we had the same kind of problem. Um, he has he has been having a very serious uh, diabetes condition. So four years ago, he got amputated from one leg, and a couple years before of that, from half of his foot. So he's not in a very good health. Uh, but with uh, our uh, current medical uh, situation, he can survive and have you know a happy life. 
So, um, but he, he's that kind of people, you know, maybe your parents are around the same age or your grandparents. Um, these people have never been used to be helped, uh, taken care for. And uh, it's very difficult for him to accept someone is going to come to his home and help him. So we have to find other words uh, to convince him to accept this uh, weekly checkup. So what I've said is at least if you don't want to do it for you, do it for mom, my mother, because she's very worried. She's uh, uh, 84. Uh, so she's in good condition she has a new a knee and a hip replacement but other than that she's okay but she will be completely lost if she's all alone that's why i've been going to see the her because i we could not see my father in the hospital and uh, also i may not go this weekend because i had other uh, previous uh, uh, things i wanted to do this weekend but the weekend after next uh, so I hope he will accept uh, the follow-up at home. I hope he will accept that at least once a week someone comes and check him up. Uh, I hope at some point he will accept some, uh, someone come at his home and help him get up, get dressed, uh, um, have a shower. Um, because my mother is doing all of that for now. And what I've seen after... He went to the hospital that she was very relieved um, some some people were taking care of him mm -hmm. but he doesn't want anyone to help him dress up and get up dress up and, or shower so um, you know that's what I'm trying to do right now convince him and that's why I, I want to talk to the medical staff at the hospital to convince him uh, he can or he should or he can accept to have someone come to his home and help him. If not for him, maybe for my mother. Okay, so I think the, you know, the emergency part of uh, his situation is behind us. Uh, he was uh, having a huge edema, he could not breathe any longer, so it was a bit... Uh, worrying and it was a bit scary. My mother was very, very, very scared. Where, when the ambulance, uh, you know, when the doctor came to uh, visit him after they called him, uh, called the ambulance and said straight to the hospital. So, uh, uh, yeah, that that episode I think has uh, lowered in intensity, but it's. It's going to take, I think, time and uh, um, I guess I will have to come and check on him on a regular basis because if he doesn't accept somebody else does, he will be happy to see me. If I can manage to maybe once a month drive half a day on the Saturday and half a day on the Sunday to come and, and visit him. Anyway. We'll see what happens for now, the emergency situation and the crisis has a bit gone, gone down in intensity and um, the doctors are not, the medical doctors are not worried about him any longer. That's what they said. So, uh, and he should go back home next week. So, uh, uh, with a follow up at home and I hope they will offer him either he goes home with the follow-up or he stays in the hospital and as he wants to go home i guess i hope he will accept the follow-up if he doesn't well we'll see i'll try to convince him this is what i have been doing for the last few days um okay it's it's, it's not completely convinced anyway um it was a bit difficult for me to record and write down this morning and record um, the video but at the same time it makes me happy and uh, uh, it you know it, for an hour or so I I was out of all of these um, uh, you know worrying thoughts and negative thoughts and 
so you know we have to you know actively place happiness into our lives because it's not going to come all by itself especially when we need it most during um periods where we are worried about our loved ones i'm sure many of you are in the same situation or have been in the same situation and uh, yes we have to take every little piece of happiness and uh, uh, place place them into uh, our lives uh, because it's not gonna come all, all by itself and um in the meantime, I think I will be able to uh, uh, post uh, another uh, knitting adventure uh, next week. And uh, my mother was in a, uh, you know, cleaning spree. That's her way to uh, discharge and, you know, have her hands um, uh, doing things so that her mind doesn't wander. And uh, she found tons of yarn. And, you know, I had her on the phone a few hours ago and she found some more. So I went back home with a full trunk of yarn and, you know, at least 10 books. And she has as much, she found as much in her home. And she's keeping them, them for me because she doesn't knit any longer. So uh, I will show you everything. I, I do not. I don't I would not have bought everything that she gave she gave me because a lot is uh, with acrylic and I don't like much so I'll see what I do uh, maybe you know beanies and stuff like that for my children uh, so that they don't worry about uh, taking care of them or for charity uh, it's not very usual in France to need for charity but uh, I'll find ways to do it and or need things and give them uh, we have several organizations. Anyway, you know, I'm already thinking about my next podcast. So uh, I will stop here. Uh, I hope you will have a very nice week. I hope you will enjoy your knitting. Uh, my own knitting has given me much comfort and I've been knitting quite a bit. And uh, uh, yes, thank you for your wonderful presence in my comments. I, I appreciate each and every one of you and uh, until my next video, happy knitting.